Don't get it lit. Sorry, everybody. Nice to see you all. Ha welcome to hashtag National Youth Jazz Christmas. Woohoo! Yes, it's that time of year when we all let our guard down and go totally bonkers. Hello, Nick. How are you doing? Hello. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> We both want to wish everybody a massive happy Christmas. We'll do it again at the end, but what a great... Absolutely. Fan fantastic uh, year and a very Merry Christmas to everyone, first and foremost. What have got the highlights been for you? The highlight, I think, was achieving an online summer school for us um, with 70 young musicians. Um, I and think that was just such a spectacular thing to have managed to achieve for the organisation and just the result of it for all the young musicians too. Well, you did a brilliant job. It was stellar. Yeah, I don't know how you got us all online and all the tutors or the young musicians. And then if anyone wants to hear the out output, we've got um, we've got all the videos of the tracks that they recorded are on our YouTube. So if you want to go to MIJC's YouTube channel, National Youth Jazz Collective. So today we've got a massive treat for everybody. And um, ooh, I think Ian's trying to get in. I can see it. Let Ian in. Here we go. Here we go. So that's perfect timing because we've got two fabulous guests with us today. We've got some young musicians as well, which we will introduce. But I think uh, we are now live and here is so Ian. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you are. Right. You can't see me. My, my Wi-Fi is really rubbish. I'm really sorry. Hang on. It's just so rubbish. Well, um, I welcome Leanne to the video as well while you... Cause you've only just yeah, started. of course. There I am. There's Ian and Leanne, come and join us, Leanne Carroll. Hello. Ooh, happy Christmas. <laughs> These were my earrings, but they both fit on. Oh, they look brilliant. Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So how have you been, Ian? Have you been festive? I can see you've got a beautiful tree in the background all revving up for Christmas. Oh, oh you can see it. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My yeah, hey, look, just so that so that I'm not left out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lovely. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. So thank you for joining us today. Um, Ian, because of, we didn't get the chance to give you an idea of what was happening, we're going to have a bit of a chat with um, three of the young musicians who are joining us shortly. And then Great. Uh, there'll be some music. Leanne sent a few video, a couple of videos. In. Oh, no. Got some dance <laughs> just going to get my one second. Everyone that's watching, can I just say, if you've got any Christmas jokes, please will you put them in the comments on Facebook because we would love, 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 love to share them. So some really sort of music-based Christmas jokes. And then Ian and myself and Leanne take it in turns during, we'll pebble dash the evening with uh, some of the jokes. Oh, will we be able to see the, um, yeah. see the comments? Yeah. Next oh, I only know one Christmas joke and it's, it's sure, really... Let's hear it. Shall yeah. I go first? Go on. Okay, how does um, good King Wenceslas like his pizzas? <laughs> Deep pan, crisp and even. Sorry, I'm so sorry, honestly. Turn me off now, mute me now. <laughs> so I've known the two of you separately and as a duo. Um, I've seen you playing and, I've, and we've had lots of intermittent conversations, but I know the young musicians are really keen to ask you questions about. Absolutely, fire away, we're so happy. I'm so happy to be here. That'd be brilliant. So um, I think without further ado, let's welcome them to the stage. We've got, uh, we've got Louis, who's a pianist. Louis Lodder, come and Thank say you. hello. Shall I mute for a minute? No, stay with us. Just okay. Stay with us. Hi, Louis, how are you doing? All right, how are you? Yeah, great. And uh, what have you been up to? Have you been able to get some playing happening? Uh, I've been doing lots of, lots of practicing, but not that much playing with other people, unfortunately. Looking for... Nah. In the new year, I'm sure. Yeah. Brilliant. Lovely to see you, Louis. And then we've also got James. James, are you there? Hi. Hi, James. Hi. Hello, James. Both Sorry. Pian Where's my video gone? And then we've got um, Phoebe, who's a singer. Phoebe. Hi. Hi, Phoebe. Hello, Phoebe. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, you all look so happy and fresh and Christmassy. So how about if we kick off uh, one question each and we rotate round and I think if we'll um, we'll ask the same question to both Leanne and Ian. So um, oh, okay, note it. So so let's start. If with Ian says anything um, intelligent, I'll just copy him. <laughs> Over to you, Louis. Um, yeah, 
I thought, I was trying to think of the questions and I thought, I mean, the most essential one is, do you have a favorite standard? And if so, like, why, why is it your favorite standard? Great question, Leanne. Yeah, um, I do, but it's different every single day. Sometimes it's different. Um, that's the thing. There's not one, I mean, there are, I was recently asked uh, by, by Budapest Jazz Club to list my 10 favorite songs. And it's one of those things, I know Ian's been asked to do this many times. It's like, it's such a privilege because you suddenly think, oh, I know so many. And then it starts getting complicated. You start thinking, oh, my favorite artist, my favorite type of band, my favorite song, my friends who I adore, you know, who do I put in, who do I leave out? But this time I just listed 10 songs off the cuff that I, that I had a sort of history with growing up. And they varied from It Bites to um, Von Karan um, conducting <coughs> the Berlin Philharmonic down to um, the Unusual Suspects. So it was like, it, I think the standard wise, there's so many stunning songs um, it really depends on how you feel. And it, the only sort of, the songs that move me are usually the ones that are <laughs> very desolate. Um, like the first time I ever heard Billy Holiday's version of You Don't Know What Love Is, you know. And I'd, I'd heard quite a few. There's one by a very renowned singer that finished in this major key with these strings. And I just thought, oh, good song ruined. But, it, you know, just the, sort of the people that are authentic and the songs that sound authentic are my favourite uh, standards. That's the honest truth of it. I, I I have so many that I don't have one, you know. I love that opening line. Yes, I do, but it's different every day. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. It, in in a way, just, yes, I can't help that. So I, I, I get moved by things, and that's what I love. Yeah. Ian? Um, much like Leanne, really. I think it changes with Probably my can. mood. <laughs> yeah. I think it changes with my mood. Sometimes something's... I'm very lyric driven so um both leanne and i push the what's called standards canon you know the standards repertoire we push it forward and backwards sometimes so we'll sing songs that are sort of modern standards you know by say Bacharach or uh even the beatles so um a good a good simple song with mostly the sort of you know a a b a sort of structure is very satisfying to sing it's also very satisfying to improvise over but I think my favorite standards, um, I really, I always sort of burst into tears when I hear Billie Holiday singing, I'm a fool to want you. Because oh. it's the ultimate sort of um, confession. If you love someone and they don't love you back, it's a very simple, I'm a fool to want you, you know, pity me, I need you. It's, it's a bit pathetic really, but it's very moving. No, it's unrequited, um, isn't it? Yeah. And I quite like some of the standards that are very unusual, like Detour Ahead, if that can even be claimed as a standard, um, with all the sort of road images in it and beautiful kind of, beautiful chords, you know. Oh, my key keyboard's gone all farty. Sorry, I'm gonna have to put the battery in. Um, yeah, so it changes with my moods, really. Um, and also I like standards that sometimes I'll sing a song I don't really enjoy the lyrics to, but if it's kind of an upswing thing, I really love the changes to, to scat over or to sort of play around with. So sometimes the, the lyrics aren't that important, but mostly, yeah. especially with ballads, they are. Brilliant. It's, it's also, sorry to interrupt, just, but, but that I agree absolutely, but it's like you talking about Billie Holiday. We both mentioned her a version that she did. Really interesting. But the other day, I uh, my cousin enlightened me to um, Nina Simone singing Cotton Eye Joe. I hadn't heard it before. And it's just like, sitting in it's like a little hymn almost it's so beautiful so there are moments that just grab you like that and you immediately want to go and have a go at doing it and there are big band numbers that stand as like the best is yet to come do da, do da, do da. and it starts that tiny and it gets that big and then it starts so that's part of like 19 of you making that noise the big band the vocalist the conductor you're all making that noise together that's what i find so exciting and in, in, in any combination of people from one to to a hundred in, in a symphony orchestra, but um, the fact that it's that energy that you're making that exciting music together, and that's what I mean. That the thing about you guys, you know, doing this, I I, I admire it and respect it so much. So this this one's so excited. <laughs> Brilliant answers, don't you think, uh, Louis? Yeah, they really are. 
books, um, very comprehensive. What's your favourite standard, Louis? Um, I was, you know, it's the same thing. Um, it does change a lot, but I was listening to you. I listened to I um this morning. I listened to you sing Alfie. Oh, <laughs> and I'd never heard that standard before. And oh. I thought, what a great tune. So I've been playing it all day. Um, so that's probably my like new. I'll probably oh, I shall tell the boys in the band. <laughs> that was really nice. So Phoebe, what's your favourite standard? Um, I love um, uh, Lambert, Hendrix and, Ro um, and Ross. Um, uh, the everyday I have the blues song. Yeah. It's an absolute brilliant song. And I love it so much. <laughs> Do you love the vibe of it? Do you love the fact that it's like it's got such energy, and also like the centerpiece? Yes, precisely. Yeah, it's it's just so amazing how they use their voices to, you know, form. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> What's your question, Lovey? Um, so my question is, um, knowing what you know now, um, what advice do you think you'd give me um, as a vocalist within jazz specifically? <laughs> it's me. Is this me? Hello. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I think you just have to love it so much and it sort of takes, that part of it takes over. There's a certain point in your, for me, it was in my, I guess, my late 20s when, because I'm an actor as well, and um, I love singing more than I love acting, but I find acting much easier than singing because you're told what to do and where to stand and, you know, but I think it just takes over and you have to just go with it and almost submit to it and, um yeah what's the question <laughs> advice i think advice yeah leanne what do you think i think just stick at it and learn it's, 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 if you don't play an instrument play, learn if you if you're a singer if you don't play an instrument learn guitar or piano so that you've got that language that you can just fall back on so you can discuss things with the band and you can maybe do your own charts and things and it was Claire Martin that got me into playing the piano because I, I, I am by no means a jazz pianist, but I sort of fake it. And and but I'm able to do gigs on my own now for, well, I used to be able to do gigs on my own now for better money than with a band because I can play, I can be my own band. So I, I would advise all singers definitely to learn at least the piano because it, it just gives you that kind of visual sort of, um, connect between what what's coming out of your mouth and what how you want to really sound and what what the the sort of nuts and bolts are of, of the music. Wouldn't you agree, Leanne? Absolutely, completely. And then when you've got that, because you, that foundation is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you're studying, um, my advice as well, just to add on to that, is also just get do something you're moved by, be moved by it, be authentic with it. So I mean, there's no point. Um, in sort of doing a song for the sake of it, fillers and that, and that, you know, both Ian and I, when you do gigs, you sort of think, oh, well, I better do a fast one after that or so on, sort of thing. We've managed, because we're both 87, we've managed to accumulate um, a, 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 phone, a, 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 what do you call it, a library of, mu of gig music that we love. So I think we've got to the point that we only do songs that we really like to do. And, and just, take the words and look at them as a poem and look at them and feel them and if you can relate to them or even if it's in the third person try and vi do visualization as well and that's how you could because the song is the boss the song is the boss you know and so just get inside it and really enjoy it don't be frightened or embarrassed of any of it just you know give it your best shot and like Julian seems every time you play even if you're alone in your kitchen your bathroom with your friends in, in school and college you know or you get when you do your singing, do it the best you you can possibly do it at the time. There's no point in marking it. Just do it. Yeah, that's. I think. I think. And, and there's not really. Don't you know? There's no point. You, you you all sound really sort of like you you've got the right vibe. You know, there, there aren't any real shortcuts. There's no point in looking at it as a shortcut or as some enormous career. If you can do it with the heart of a musician of a minstrel, you're doing it to play with other people and to enjoy the music. Hopefully, to make a living out of it. If you know, but, but it's just to sort of, um, I think authenticity is, is where we're both coming from and, and what we would definitely advise. I think with that also, we, we surprise ourselves because we 
being our true selves there's bits of ourselves we didn't even know until we put it in, connecting that way so beautiful answers Are you happy with oh, that? i hope so well it's you know it's yeah. important i think to 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 respect the soul you know thank you very much thank you phoebe good luck with it indeed oh, oh james next please. hello james yeah um i'd love to continue on that really um really about authenticity and how did you really find your true self and like what you wanted to do in music and what you how you wanted to play each song and how was how was your process for working out what you wanted here and what you wanted to play really um, Leah. I, okay my, my process is it was very organic um i um i left school at 17 i didn't take any what they call a levels now um or they were then <laughs> And I didn't go on to college. I didn't go to music college. I had piano lessons. I had one singing lesson that was appalling that I couldn't quite get my head around where this lady threw a tennis ball back and forth and cuckoo, cuckoo. And I just thought, no, that's not me. Um, I've had, I had loads of years of worrying about what people thought, you know, because all the insecurities come in. So the best thing is to sort of keep it all in a box, keep your humility. But the, it, I used to fear, so I listened to Victor Moan with the, with the Count Basie Big Band doing Falling in Love with Love. And when I was about five or six, and my mum said I just used to stand in fears. And so I um, took piano lessons, but I just used to have such an added excitement if I heard big band music or I got hold of a manuscript of Lemon Drop or something like that. And um, that's basically the, my only sort of way that I've I, I sort of encountered it. I got my grade eight on, on the trumpet and on the piano. But, and, and I've always had a love for music. I've always been terrified that I wouldn't love it, but I, I'm fortunate, even when I think I don't love it, I know I do. Um, it's the relationship that's like one of the most complex ones that I've ever had, but one of the most gratifying ones that I've ever had. I think if you, you, you get out what you put in, you know, basically. Mm. <clears throat> um, yeah, the process, I think I, I completely concur with what Leanne said. We're just the same people really, aren't we? We've, we've always thought that a bit. Um, we're similar age and we, we both play the piano and we like, we thrill to the same sort of uh, things in music. We always go for the same harmonies when we try and harmonize <laughs> together. <laughs> so I feel like Leanne really is my spiritual sister. I've got quite a few of them. Um, Claire Martin also, I feel that way with as well. Um, I think the process, again, is similar to my first reply. I think it sort of takes it takes you by surprise, really, as, as Izzy said as well. Um, I am not um, naturally hardworking. Can I say that? I suppose, yeah. <laughs> so I sort of missed what I love about um, your generation, you guys, uh, is that you've got this wonderful sort of, uh, this wonderful arena of education that can really, really <coughs> voc vocationally help you, you know, uh, when I was at when I was at university, I did classical music and drama, and I really didn't enjoy it very much because I really wanted to sing the blues and jazz and rock and soul. So, um, I, I I would take as much information as you could possibly get at any stage, and just store it up and chew it up and really enjoy it. And it always comes back to to help you, I think. Um, and also, as Leanne said earlier on, authenticity. Um, you can tell when, you know, when somebody goes on stage, less musicians, because musicians are kind of, they have a job to do as well as be creative. Whereas, you know, in a, in a big band thing, they're not the kind of, until they stand up and solo, they're not, you're part of this texture, which is why I like being an actor as well, because I love being part of a group of people creating something and told, being told what to do a bit. But with singing jazz, do you know what? I still don't really know what my process is. I just enjoy it. I love making an audience cry and laugh. Uh, yeah. I love I love introducing an audience to a song that they never, maybe have never heard before. Um, and I love doing unexpected material as well, I suppose. Um, like Alfie, I suppose, you know, it's not, it's not, I'm not a crooner. I, if I if I put a suit on, nah. I've been asked to wear suits many times for big band gigs. I just look like a very, very dodgy car dealer. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> so, um, I'm sort of, I plow my own furrow and I hope that people accept me for what I am. 
and the stuff that I talk about on stage as well, it's all about truth. It's all about just being yourself and enjoying yourself and making sure that people in the audience can hear you. I don't mean hear you physically, but they can hear your heart. They can hear your truth and what you're putting into the music. And you know what? And Leanne, Leanne and I can tell when, when people are faking. Can't we, Leanne? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it frustrates you know. me. I find it frustrating only because of the amount of people that I know that love music so much that maybe don't get a chance to get up on that stage. Mm. And then someone gets on it and they're more worried about what bloody, excuse me, what colour shoes they're wearing and all that stuff. I can't be doing with that, as you can probably tell. But, um, you know, that, that side of it, I'm, I'm sorry. But, yeah, just that the music's got to be real for you. Even, and it does get painful. It does get painful. I think it should do. I've been in tears on stage. I'm, you know, unfortunately, I'm not very good at sort of hiding all that. And um, people throwing toilet rolls at one gig I did in in, um, in Swanage. I'm sure that was maybe a critique. I don't know, but <laughs> they, you know, because I was just trying to do the Tom Waits song, and it just kills you. But that's if you can portray that honestly, then there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's to be as on open and honest as you can be, and it feels really good to do that. And the earlier you can do that in your life, the better. Yeah, I agree. You, talking of uh, it, songs, one of the songs that you chose to share with us this evening was uh, something that we've talked about quite a lot and listened to a lot in the past. I don't the young musicians that we're with today haven't um, worked on this piece with us, but it's the it's the great do it the hard way. Um, oh, yeah. So I was wondering if you might just explain a little bit about what um, George Fame did with um, Chet Solo. You heard that version. Me? Yeah. Oh yes, well that that I I think really and truly I I I've always taken the enjoyment of that song from Chet's version, yeah. and I'm not as familiar with George's version as so Maybe you could, Izzy. Would you mind enlightening me? So, um, basically, it's because I think it's really lovely for them to know about vocalese, and so yeah. um, George. Did you write words to the to that solo? Yeah, he's he's carried the story on from the verse. Yeah. Yet solo, so. Well, I think you said video in which Nick's now going to share with everybody so we're all going to take ourselves offline just for a few minutes while we share I'm sorry about the, 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 I'm sorry about the quality of the technical thing I've been having nightmares with it so do, I do apologize everyone what does this song mean to you before we go on what why did you choose this particular song it's a great choice what is it about this song something about the solo is an extension of what he's saying and I and I really want to hear the words George Fain does now but just um it's my favorite solo I think my favorite sort of vocal solo and Chet was like, God, yeah, what a soul he had. And it's a great song. It's a really lovely one to sing along to and learn. So here we go. Chet, oh, make <laughs> do it the hard way. Over to you, Nick. Wait. 
did when I tried to get you. And you took the soft way when you said, We will see your oh, darling. Now I will let you do it our way. Now that you want me. jumper but this, this is all the tree i thought i was hidden you see i was embarrassed but uh, mm -hmm. uh it's such a lovely song it's a happy song it's a really good one to learn and oh. this and the, the mm -hmm. solo is like it's just like an extension of the melody which is great you know people ask a lot about scatting and solos and how it's it's start really really simply you know start really simply to, to make it less of a cerebral thing and more of, and you're just doing phrases and you're answering yourself and it it's a great exploration. Brilliant. Beautiful. Really, really. Thank you so much for doing that. It's really oh, no. <coughs> my pleasure. Can't really? keep me quiet. Now, first of all, everybody, what kind of Christmas music do elves like? Does anybody want to answer that one? What kind of music do elves Free jazz. Like? <laughs> elves. Rap. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So, oh, Ian, come back. Are you, are you back online again with the video? I think we might. Yes, I was just you... momentarily. There I am. A great song. It's a great solo and great performance. So, um, let's get the answer okay. again. We've got three more questions. So, Louis, would yeah. you like to ask Ian your first question? Your second. Yeah. Um, you were talking earlier about how you think it's important that you can. That you, you both play uh, piano and yeah. really like very well. Um, and Thank you. firstly, Thank you. Um, firstly, what makes a good accompanist when you are singing? And also, do you find that if you're accompanying yourself, does it give you more freedom? Ooh. Yes. Leanne, me? <laughs> yeah. So I yeah, I, I think, well, I think Leanne pr probably would say similar things, but when, when I'm playing um, for myself, I can go off anywhere I like, really, um, and I indeed do, so I sort of, almost to keep myself entertained, um, and I can do, you know, Leanne and I both do the sort of... Um, <laughs> We sort of sing along with our right hand, almost like George Benson does with his guitar. And that's kind of, um, I, I, I don't ever solo. I don't solo on the piano when I'm playing on my own. But I, what I do do is, you know, you know, that thing. And Leanne does that too. Um, and then we, when Leanne's with her rhythm section, she solos, but I can't really play with bass and drums. It's not my thing. However, I have a trio that I work with. Um, and that brings up out so many different things. Number one, I'm a much better singer when I'm standing up. I've got more, I've got more, I'm more relaxed when I'm standing up in a funny sort of way. I'm also more challenged because I have to listen very carefully. Mark, the great Mark Murphy, who was a dear friend of mine, um, he told me to listen to the drums more. He said, because your harmony is fine. He said, just listen to the drums. Huh. And he'd make me go and stand next to the drummer and really listen to all the patterns that, that my drummer was making. Uh, and then over the years, my relationship with the drums became more invested in that. And I, I love my drummer, Dave Ohm. I, I find it very difficult to work with anyone else because he listens to me really hard. And then I listen to him and that combined thing makes it really exciting. Um, same with bass, you know, I love, I love to sing just with a bass it's very exciting and it, it it makes you search for different ways of of delivering what you want to you know the, the musical message really um i'm rambling a bit here but playing the piano for myself i can do anything i like and i i sometimes play chords and i think oh well i'll never be able to play that one again you know because i haven't written it down almost um there's a there's a i found a new chord which goes like um we both do Joni Mitchell's uh, It's coming out Christmas and they're cutting down trees. Uh, they're putting up ranger and singing songs of joy and peace. I wish I wish I had a river. 
I could skate away. Oh. So that chord came by accident, really, because the, the chord, the, the, the chord it, it goes from one to five. So it goes, mm, I could skate away, way, way, way on, but I got way on. And because of the notes in the chord that I know that I'm playing, I know what I'm going to sing as well, if that makes sense. But singing with a big band, standing up, wow. Yeah. There's nothing like it, or with an orchestra, you know, Leanne and I both work with orchestras, well, we used to. Um, uh, and that's that's an incredibly thrilling thing as well, because you've got this big beast roaring behind you. But at the same time, because of technology, you can whisper as well. So you can still, you know, you can still sing, where has the time all gone to? You don't have to go, where has the time all gone to? Just because you're in front of a big band, because you've got a mic. So that mic becomes your mate after a while. Leanne, what do you reckon? Yeah, exactly the same. Um, I remember um, years and years ago doing a masterclass uh, with some singers and we had as a guest Kurt Leitze, who's an oh. um, amazing American um, pianist and was an accompanist to Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan. And I just remember shaking with, like, I was so happy and excited to, to get a chance to sing a song with this guy. And he was, what it is, he just, it's all about listening. Um, you've got the chords, you've got, you know, if you're accompanying someone, you've got the information, you've got the data. Um, but then, you know, so you have to just know that. And then you, you can free it up by listening to, to what the, 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 the soloist is doing, whether it's a, a singer or another instrumentalist. And it's, if you can do that and be sort of open, it really helps rather than just, right, I'm sticking to these chords and that's what it says on the paper. And then you might have, you might have missed something really lovely. So if, if be brave. That's what I say. Be brave. But listen. Oh. And the vibe of singing with the big band is the best in the world. Do you know these answers are so beautiful that I now believe that I can sing and play the <laughs> I've never even tried. But it's just... Yeah. I'm filled with such confidence from what you're saying, such gentle confidence as well. Really. Oh yes, it's not. Yeah, keep the. Yes, it's not. It's not sort of to lose any humility, but it's. It's just. It's Beautiful. such an amazing entity, and especially at a time like this when we're all the whole world's a bit discombobulated. You know, music is a very powerful healing thing as well as as well as being an academic thing and career thing and all that. It's it's got such quite amazing powers. Use them. I'll, I'll, I've got a question about that, but I'll save it because it might come out from the young musicians. So, all right. Maybe. Would you like to ask Leanne your next question? Yes, um, it's quite a broad question, but so far, uh, what has been your favourite place to perform in uh, or venue? Easy, easy, easy. Would you easy. believe it? Easy. One, two, three. Quarters. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say quarters wine bar. In Hastings, little tiny wine bar that I've been playing for 33 years. Mm -hmm. um, alas, this is the first Christmas Eve that I might be playing there. Um, but um, and as Ian will probably be telling you as well, we've both been lucky enough to play in some of the greatest concert halls in the world. Which you know, that's that's the thing that I suppose you aim for because it is the best feeling. I remember doing the proms at Royal Albert Hall a month after my mum died, and all I could, she was hoping that she'd live long enough to, to come, and alas, she didn't. But um, I was wearing the dress that I, I buried her in. Not, not her dress, I'm so sorry. I was wearing the dress that I went to her funeral in and I was wearing her like a coat all over me. And it, that, that place, it doesn't matter sort of, it's like you're playing this amazing sort of, it's the people in it. And it's the people who you're playing with that I think is more important than the actual venue. Although, you know, Glastonbury is pretty gorgeous because there's so much love going on there. But so we play some big places, but some tiny little pockets of, of love going on in music somewhere in London or in Colchester or somewhere they, they should never ever be forgotten or thought of as light because that's where just as much music gets done as importantly that's what I would say and of course you're more exposed in a tiny place Phoebe because you can see their faces when you can't see their faces it's almost like oh well I'm not as nervous you think you're going to be nervous for the big one but um no I remember having a backstage giggle with Eminem in Brasilia. That was, um, you know, to, uh, to 65,000 people in a car park in Brasilia. And he's a pussycat, you know, because I do like his music, but he was like really nice. And it was like, I was so blown away by the fact that he was nice. I almost forgot that I had to go on stage. But those ones, you can't see the faces and it's joy and I'm lucky and I'll count my blessings. 
I do like the intimate ones. Yeah. Ian. Sorry, I can't stop talking now. Really great. Ian. Um, I'm tempted to say Ronnie Scott's really because it's always, you're so close to the audience and yet you, there's something very um, theatrical about it as well. It's just the way it's set out with the, you know, with the great, great, graded seating and things. Graded? What do I mean? You know, raked, <laughs> seat, raked seating. Um, I love it though because I've been singing there like Leanne, you know, since, I mean, I first, I did my first gig there when I was 24. Um, and I guested with Ronnie's band and I, I, Leanne and I both used to support all the, you know, massive international artists. And then we got our, then we got our own headline slots there. Yeah. And I, I feel, I feel, you know, it's, they're doing such a good job at the moment. I, I was there last night to see Natalie Williams' Soul Family. And oh. we, my partner and I sat plexiglassed off and things and it's just it's it's an extraordinary place and the staff are really lovely and it would be a, a huge it's it's a real community there although it, it feels quite grand when you walk in as soon as you're in there as soon as you make contact with one of the the, the waiters the waiters or the staff you know that they really love being there too and they treat the musicians really well I think and yeah. it's just exciting you know you're standing on the stage where Sarah Vaughan and Ella and stood and I just think what the what the heck am I doing what you know I was going to just be a character actor and join the RSC you know carry a spear or do comedy I didn't, didn't expect to be singing jazz in the greatest jazz club in the world so I suppose it has to be for me Ronnie Scott's um I like the dressing room once you're in there you can't really get out because it's, it's like you're trapped and I quite like that because it doesn't I, I'm not tempted to go and, to go out and talk to people until the end no. I think it's I, Ronnie. I, I, I concur. I concur. And the sound there's really good because you can hear when you're in the audience, you can hear the it's you know it's mic'd up in such a way that you can really hear the instruments on. You can hear the wood of the piano. You can hear them right in the room as well. Um, yeah, I think Ronnie Scott's has got to be my favourite, really. And I also present their radio show on Jazz FM. Plug every Friday at nine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've always wanted to ask both of you, but never had the opportunity. Is when you're on a large stage, you still maintain and manage to create that wonderful intimacy. And there's one gig that I remember that I came to, which was totally blown away when you celebrated 100 years of the PRS um, at the QEH. In oh, yes. That wonderful gig. And it felt so intimate. This is a huge yeah. Well, it's a quite a difficult room as well. The acoustics aren't the easiest for a different lineup. So, so when you're actually on a big stage like that, and there is that intimacy coming out to the audience, do you actually feel it on stage as well? Yeah, I think I, th I think so. Yeah, I mean the QE. I've played the QEH a handful of times. Queen Elizabeth Hall. Um, Leanne and I both sang at the Albert Hall to celebrate 60 years of Ronnie Scott, and that surprisingly i've sung there a couple of times before that's the most intimate gig in the world you stand yeah. on a huge stage and you think oh there are people up there and up there and up there but it feels it's so beautifully designed it feels oh. like you're in someone's living room you know um, it's very very precious it really is a, a treat and a, a joy to yeah. do that but equally i love playing you know tiny there's a gig that i do in um where is it? In uh, in Berlin? In Berlin. I can't remember where it is. That has some of how embarrassing. It's a tiny little jazz club called Unterfahrt. Um, and it's it's just, it holds 80 people. And it's it's so exciting just being there. And, and you can sort of see the whites of everyone's eyes, you know, and you can almost hear their conversations. I like that as well. I also sort of feel that I'm interrupting someone's evening. <laughs> I quite like that feeling. <laughs> So James, yeah. last question. Anything after that? I think Ian's going to sing to us. So. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> yeah. What's your question, Lovey? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, um, what musical artist most inspired you, and uh, why? Leanne. Leanne. Uh, Laura Nero. When I was fourteen, um, she she um, was a New Yorker, <clears throat> and sadly died when she was forty nine, and she just wrote these beautiful songs. She had a Marmite voice, who I either loved or hated. I loved it, and loads of trombones, so rich harmonies, rich arrangements. And I used to listen to her an awful lot. And um, yeah, she she very inspired me. And then later in my life, uh, Tom Waits came in, 
and wiped sort of swept me off my feet there are a lot a lot of them you know a lot of um um influences but those are the two that i can readily happily say are influences always older than you are the people that come along uh, no i think no there's plenty of young oh my god no it oh, never gosh, was yeah. who might you say from the younger I, was, I think it's really important for the older, for the young musicians to realise that, you know, you're part of the scene now. It, you know, it's a journey that we're all taking together. There is no start and finish. It's a, it's exactly. A, when, you, when you hear people say, oh, these are the musicians of tomorrow. No, they're not. They're doing it today. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a big fan of um, the, the, the players on the scene at the moment. Um, I just, uh, they're so exciting to, to watch them grow you know watch them grow musically and also watch them grow as as humans as well i'm a yeah. huge huge fan of emily king mm -hmm. who's a new york based singer um she i think she's younger than me she must be everyone's younger than me at the moment um <laughs> and there's 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 an amazing what's happened with with jazz the jazz scene is that it's now acknowledging the black community like in a way that it hadn't done before things like um, Refreshed mm -hmm. and Soweto Kin, she's a phenomenal human being. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's very important that um, I've talked to many young um, black musicians about this and they all, they, they're all excited by the fact that it's not now just, oh yes, I remember the Jazz Warriors. It's, it's not just a white middle-class boys game i have to say it because i think it's important to say that I and it, it feels great. like it feels like there's a brilliant scene out there and it's for everyone now um and i think that's really important i feel that's also true about the gender side of things that that's absolutely oh my god finally yes it's coming around it's needed it's to. coming yeah 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 absolutely is here because it was always like what do you mean you're not a singer you're a girl no, I play the bass. <laughs> yeah, it's it's there's an hopefully empowerment our, there now. Hopefully, our generation saw the, the last of the worst of it, you know, because I think there's mm -hmm. a lot more awareness now, thankfully. But yeah. yeah, we yeah we've been through a few dodgy times at gigs yeah. where people have been so patronising, uh, just because I happen to be female, and it's uh, I found that quite I, I just I plowed through it, you know, grumpily or whatever, or just now being in went on and sang my heart out that's what matters really one of my favorite standards grumpily i love that one <laughs> grumpily yeah you really grumpy ever is you're wonderful <laughs> oh i do find it quite hard to be, to be grumpy there's so much to be not grumpy about <laughs> exactly i know Although I was grumpy yesterday in co-op with two girls who were on purpose not wearing their masks. Well, this will cheer you up. We've got another joke just come in, and it's this. How, this is for everybody, how did Mary and Joseph know Jesus' weight when he was born? Oh, oh what? Because he was away in a manger. No. They had a way in a manger. Very good. Away in a manger. That's very good. <laughs> very good. So can we hand over to you, Ian? Would you sing a little something for us? That'd be really wonderful. Yeah, sure. This is a song that... Um, I'll mute myself while you're on. <laughs> this is a song that uh, was sung by Judy Garland. Um, and I love it very much. It's, a, it's particularly resonant now. I haven't done a warm-up. Okay. <laughs> Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. A merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay From now on our troubles 
will be miles away. Here we are as in olden days. Happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us. Gather near to us once more through the years we all will be together. If the fates allow, until then we'll have to go through some hard times. A merry little Christmas through. And a shining star upon the highest bound, the highest bound, and have yourself a merry little Christmas now. so beautiful i was just sitting here thinking how lucky are we to spend this evening with the two of you and the three young musicians what a magical special evening i'm so thrilled i'm so moved and I, I sound like judy dench i'm sorry I should have no you sound gorgeous <laughs> perfect choice of song that that's phrase the same song if the fates allow that's just well that's the original the original lyric was, um, until then, we'll have to muddle through somehow. When Sinatra uh, recorded it, he thought that it was too sort of miserable. So he, he, he summoned the lyricist to write, ah. hang a shining star upon the highest bow. So, ah! Yeah. It is beautiful, so... Before we... Um, it Harold Arlen. We invite the dancers to come and join us. Um, I was wondering, there's one thing, that, um, and I'm really very keen for the young musicians to stay with us as well as this part of conversation. But I would like to ask both of you about improvising with lyrics, as in not having lyrics that you then improvise melody, but actually going on to solo where you sort of conjure up lyrics from nowhere. <coughs> do, you, do you do much of that? And is there anybody, like Norma Winston does it quite a lot. And I think Tina, I've seen Tina. Tina. Tina and Norma are brilliant at it. I am rubbish at it. Oh, I've done gigs with Ian. I've done gigs with Ian twice where something's happened where we were doing, um, you don't know what, oh no, hang on, um, Wild is the Wind. And um, it said, um, you touched me. I hear the sound of mandolins and I sang mandarins and I couldn't stop laughing. And we were doing, we were at Wigan Jazz Festival. <laughs> and we were doing very serious. <clears throat> version of Hallelujah and I was reading the lyrics with the two of us Ian was playing the piano and I was right by the piano singing mm. and there's a she tied you to a kitchen chair that's you know I, I'm I, I had a slight dyslexic moment and I said she very seriously she tied you to a chicken there and that was the whole Wigan Jazz Festival for 20 minutes no one could do anything we were laughing so much everyone was laughing those sort of moments oops there's nothing you can do about them. So no, I can't think of any words suddenly. I'm, I'm terrible at that. I know there's loads of people that are really good at it. And I think it's brilliant, but I'll leave the experts to do that. I just start. Their own, yeah, absolutely. Like you're saying about authenticity. That's yeah. yeah. John yeah. Hendricks was, uh, John Hendricks could make up, seriously make up a whole song on the spot, rhyming. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it up until the, the week he, he passed, he was just so... I interviewed him about three weeks before he died. <coughs> and he was so full of energy. <clears throat> he, used to make, he used to see things and just make... Oh, there's, a, there's an open window looking up at that. I can't do it. 
No, um, we need. He, he he would just make it sound really resonant. Claire Martin can can sing. Leanne and I have giggled about this because we were we were next to a swimming pool on somewhere hot and we did it. Do you remember? Claire Martin can make up a 1930s standard with a verse, and you'd never know that it wasn't a standard. The moon is incredible. The moon is high, the sky is low, the stars are upon us now. Just these kind of standard words. She can just yeah. make the whole thing up. And Leanne and I did it and we we kind of cracked it, didn't we? Yeah, but no, there was no one there to see it. No. <laughs> just the French skies. Oh no, we both, I mean, I know you, your relationship with, with Claire and the gigs you do is such a wonder to see. And it's so beautiful. It's two, for me, it's two people um, top draw, like doing what they do best brilliantly together. And, and I've been lucky enough to do a few gigs with Claire as well. And I adore her. And I, but, I, but I, the relationship that you two have got is so special. It's brilliant to watch and listen to. She's very naughty. She's very funny. And we, you know, the, the thing about, Leanne saying, you know, she tied you to a chicken. Laughter is everything in any art form. It's absolutely everything. It, if you can't laugh at yourself and laugh with other people, then it does become quite a chore, you know. And we've we've all had to find different ways of of laughing, you know, this year. Um, and it's always music that just brings us through, really. But laughing, yeah. laughing, laughing. I li I live to laugh. It's the best thing in the world. Yes, I think it's it, it's it's an important part of it. I thought you were inspired when you got Julian Clary to come and do, who stands there with a mask and then he just takes it away and goes ground control to Major Tom. Oh yes, I know. No, I, I think I sang ground control to Major Tom, and he went, "Yes, I can hear you loud and clear." <laughs> I made that mask for him the night before. I was up till two in the morning making this David Bowie mask for him. Um, <laughs> Very funny, yeah, yeah. Nobody expected that one. Julian Clary for you guys is a, is a very funny comedian. He's um, in his early 60s now. He's been around, he's very camp and very funny and very cheeky. And David Bowie is one of my heroes. So the question earlier on was who did you, who was your influences? For me, it was Sarah Vaughan, David Bowie, Chet Baker and Stevie Wonder, I think. Joni Mitchell yeah. came a little bit later. And Todd Rundgren. Oh yeah, Todd. Today, your chariot horse. Yeah, Todd Rundgren. <laughs> and Mark Murphy. Absolutely, came much later for me in my twenties. Yeah. Um, Steve Ruby introduced me to him. He phoned me and said, "Ian, it's Steve at the six oh six. I've got Mark Murphy here." And I went, "I'll be there in ten minutes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we became we just absolutely. I think he recognised a lot of himself in. He adored in me. you. In me, in me, really, because we, we're very similar people, I think. We've got a similar sort of energy. And yeah, so Mark Murphy, absolutely, definitely. But, you know, I have to say it, and she's going to kill me for it, but one of my biggest influences is Leanne Carroll. Yeah. No, Always no, has no. been. Yeah. Always has been. Right from the... I got an album that, that you can't get now, and it's Leanne. It's probably got the worst cover I've ever seen on any album, and it's a painting of Leanne. Oh, up, yeah. Do you remember that? And it's a drawing, the, they got me with a can of Coca-Cola. Yes, yes. Like yes, but the, it's it was, it, you do um, um, Love Dance on it, you do, um, oh. oh, no, 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 the one before that, which was, which, you, you, you sing something, something in the way he moves All right. on that first album. So I've got two albums of Leanne's that nobody's got. Well, nobody can get hold of, should we say, uh, yeah. They're probably about worth about five hundred quid on eBay now. <laughs> what was the album called? Okay, that's yeah. live. That's it's it. Long. Such a great album, and it's got the funniest picture. It looks like a anyway. Yeah. God, that's really rude of me to say that, isn't it? I didn't mean. No, it's not clear. I'm on it. <laughs> All this come, talk of joyousness and finding solace in celebrating life, even when we're going through a pandemic, it's important. It's a very important part of being. Mm. <clears throat> things that you can find in that and sharing it. So, sharing, we... sharing it, yeah, it's very important. It's a community. This is a music community and never more have we needed it when we're, you know, when, when mm. the powers to be and it's all so, being stopped at the moment. It will get better, guys. One of the it will. One of the things I enjoyed around music is dancing as well. I've always loved dancing. It's such an important part of our music and it's something we don't talk about very much and yet it's such an integral part. <coughs> so, yes. 
thrilled to um, announce today that next year's main theme that's going to run through the whole programme is that relationship between music and dance. And wow. the young musicians, three of the young musicians, three of the dancers that we are going to be working with are, are going to join us now. So I'd like to welcome wow. to the stage Nancy, Kat and Annette. Uh, are you Hi! Going? Everybody stay where you are and then they're going to come and join us. Are they, are you... Bye! Hi! Hello! Hello. Hey, everybody! Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Shim sham shimmy. Shim sham. <laughs> yes, it's a bit of a giveaway, right? Yeah. Shim sham shimmy. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's exciting to be here because oh, I've, been, I've been enjoying this conversation um, because, uh, yeah, the roots of jazz it has dance alongside it. Um, in, now coming under the umbrella <laughs> of. Um, authentic jazz or the American vernacular jazz dancers. Uh, so Nancy, Kat and I are um, Lindy Hop and tap dancers as well. Nancy and Kat are the Lindy Hoppers and I'm a tap dancer. Thank you. Um, and what's really great uh, about the, the dance is its connection to the music. Uh, for me, it's like embodying, embodying the music so you can visually see what the rhythms are doing. Um, and as a tap dancer, um, I work with both choreography, but I, I work a lot with improvisation um, and like finding that relationship with the music and with the musicians is quite essential to a lot of my work. Oh, but um, we would like to, um, Nancy, Kat, is there anything else you want to add? I think mostly it's a very happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy Festivus to the rest of us. And we'd really love to get um, everybody embodying that groove and, and in both playing it and also maybe even dancing to it. Cause I think if you can feel the, if you can feel the rhythm, you can play the rhythm. And I think that's something that we really feel passionate about um, and are really looking forward to working on in the new year. So might you tell us about the little video you put together um, and then we were actually going to invite the viewers to do, some, do you want to explain what the video is about? We're going to come back afterwards, so don't, after the video finishes, don't think it's the end of the show, because we've got some Christmas carols to sing as well. But <coughs> you just explain to everybody what, what's going to happen, um, and then we will share the video. Yes, yeah, so um, we're going to show the uh, Shim Sham Jimmy, <laughs> um, which is it's considered the, it's almost like the national anthem of tap dance. Um, it's so embedded in the in the in the jazz form that both Lindy Hop and tap dancers have a version. There's actually multiple versions of it, um, and uh, it's structured. It's a 32 bar chorus, um, so it fits with a lot of jazz standards. Uh, it's swung. Um, it's made up of uh, four phrases, four lots of eight which is quite a, a particular a, a way of uh, choreographing and putting the structure in, together. Uh, we're going to demonstrate the uh, first three um, phrases. Uh, the, there's two of them already on the video, and I'm going to give you a live demonstration of one of them, if that's okay with you. <laughs> yes. um, so the first point I want to actually want to add, um, dance <coughs> Uh, and not to be thrown, not to throw the musicians, uh, it's basically two bars of four. So when we're counting five, six, seven, eight, uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for musicians, it's one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Uh, it's just, it's an, I don't know when that started, but it's, it's a very convenient way for dancers. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the third, I'm uh, actually going to give you the third phrase. It's like the B section, if you like. Which is called the uh, Takiani or Takani, depending on who you speak to. Um, and because I'm not in tap shoes, I'm going to be scatting <laughs> <laughs> or attempt to scat. But hopefully, you can see my feet um, and you can hopefully hear. Um, uh, and uh, yes, so uh, it starts on the pickup of the bar, so it starts on. Um, I'll count five, six, seven, and eight, and it's a very kind of swung fill. 
So the phrase is a five, six, seven, and eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, and eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven. And what's very common with the jazz dancers is that you have a, a six bar phrase <coughs> that, uh, that kind of repeats and a two bar break. So the, the takani is exactly like that. Uh, and for tap dancers, we start as five, six, seven, and eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, and eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, and eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven. Then we have the break. Eight, one, two, and three, and five, six, seven. And it yeah. sounds like... We'll have to move on, Lavi. We're going to have to do the video. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's but that's right. a little flavour to show... That's amazing. Give me a big round of applause. Yeah, because um, that's giving you a flavour for the workshops. What fabulous teaching. Look at that. Instruction. Amazing. Let's hear the wonderful video that you put together. And just to remind everybody, you can keep watching this. You can come back and we're going to put it up separately as well. So if you really would like to watch it several times so that you really get the steps, you'll be able to do that from our YouTube channel. Sorry to cut you short, lovey, but I just need to, we need to keep it on track of time. But that was fabulous. Over to you, Nick.
That was so cool. When you were doing uh, do it the hard way, I wanted the three of them to leap out on the screen and. Ah, see I turned my video off because I was having a go at it as well, and I just do. Yeah. I didn't want anyone to see me having a go at it. I'm out of so out of breath, but it makes you feel so cool just dancing to jazz. Wow, that was brilliant. So um, and Swing Sister Swing, you're going to come back on the third of March to do a whole hour with us and talk about things further, and we're going to share. Uh, we'll do some teaching videos, and we've already spoken about repertoire, so tunes that really suit the dance routines, so that we can make sure that our program really is married up. Might might you just say a couple of quick words about the sort of history there, um, Nancy? About the when would that kind of dance have been happening with that music? Um, well, the Shim Sham is uh, credited with coming out in, the, uh, in 1927 uh, by two dancers whose names are escaping me. I'm looking at Annette and Kat on the video. The Shim Sham Shimmy in the fine print underneath her, uh, her excellent guidance um, and was often a finale piece um, that was done both by Lindy Hoppers and by, uh, and by tap dancers. But the time frame we're talking about here is really leading up until the swing era. So we're talking very much about the jazz that was being made in the late 20s all the way up until really the early 50s and sort of the post-war big band era. So that's the stuff that we're going to be diving into uh, and really uh, taking off. And a big muchos thanks to Kat Foley, who uh, also edited, not only danced beautifully, but also edited the video for us. So happy Christmas to all of us. And uh, the best gift of all is Kat Foley uh, and her editing skills along with Annette. So Thanks, Izzy. We're really looking forward to the new year and what we're going to do together. I was wondering whether we might ask Leanne and Ian if they've ever actually worked, you know, with dancers and, and what sort of things they might have done. So, Leanne? Yes, I have. I mean, uh, the, on a very basic level, I, my daughter, she teaches dance now. Um, <clears throat> when she was growing up, she's 35 now, I used to go to their dance school and play piano for them when they had exams for the kids and things and that. And again, it's a listening thing. It's a really brilliant um relationship and it's so, like watching that that beautiful thing it was so evocative you know when you remember seeing videos of people in speakeasies you know like in america like that with, with the jazz when it wasn't allowed or because you know the racism and all that and then you see people dancing and they just let themselves go the freedom and that i enjoy that freedom when i'm singing as, as i know ian does but that when you get that to that point where you the song takes over once you're singing it or once you're dancing to it. And it's just a beautiful thing to do. So yes, and um, I remember I've, I've played for a couple of dancers and it's, it's nerve wracking, but really very um, rewarding. Sorry, I can't get any words out. That was so brilliant, I enjoyed that. Ian. Um, well, I've danced in shows, would you believe? Um, brilliant. In yeah. my slimmer years, um, yeah. I, I was dancing in shows as part of uh, my kind of my early bits of my career. And also I danced in a show last year in New York called The Big Blind with Kurt Elling. We played, um, he wrote a, a part for me in a, a musical a extravaganza with a big band and an orchestra. And I played a sort of an evil con, con artist, sort of bad agent who, who thought to, dis to destroy his 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 act, which was a young guy called Jack, who was played by Curling. So we did um, we we did some little shuffly little steps in that, which is quite good fun. Was he the but, hero, and you were the villain. I was the villain, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So I did some, you know, a little bit of, yeah, some steps, <laughs> this kind of thing. <laughs> it's a lovely feeling, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. The music and dance is just it's just the best thing ever, isn't it? Really, um, people. Yeah automatically dance to music you know and I think it's just I think it's just wonderful yeah and I mean dance, dance is music isn't it really it's a sort of it is a, an expression of of um beats and colors and yeah and moods same. vibrations yeah that was amazing women wow yeah amazing loved so it Phoebe and James and Louis, do you do any, do you move when you play and do you, or do you ever dance? Do you, I don't like a good disco. I, I like to completely let my hair down. Oh, <laughs> you, so, I'm sorry, before that answers me again, I do apologise. My husband is a brilliant bass guitarist. He's excellent. He's in my band. He's got amazing rhythm and groove now. Sometimes he dances, you know, moves on stage. 
seen art anywhere near the rhythm of the music. I don't know how he does it. It's like he's got two bodies. It's really weird because he's in time completely in space. Then I watch it. I don't watch his feet because it's like all over the place, it's, unless he's doing some very complex time underneath it. But I doubt it very much. I just had to share that with you. We love to. As we round off, Phoebe James Louis dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes I just like like the music just takes over, doesn't it? And, yeah. <laughs> That's the best thing. Let it always yeah. let it. Is that? And my nan said to me when I was eight. She said, "There's two things that are very uh, redundant." trying to be cool and embarrassment. And, and I, I've held that to, because we do get embarrassed. We have fear when we're performing. We worry about what people are thinking. I always used to imagine the worst. I, the first time I played it in 606, there were people sort of sitting right now. And, you mm. know, that was there to it. But I let it get to me and my fingers turned to concrete. And, and it was like that. And it's, you know, if you can just get over that one, any nerves, use them, use it as energy. But, um, like you said, you said the most perfect thing then, Phoebe, when the music takes you over. That's its job. That's its job. Louis and James? I yeah. Have, yeah. Louis? I haven't, I've never done any dancing, um, but there is a point at which, as Phoebe said, the music does take over you. So often I find myself moving in some sort of way to the music, whether it's with my feet, yeah. you know, but you do it does take over and movement is a very important part of music and playing even if you're not you know what someone and it, it's, a, it's a lovely thing as well to do because if you imagine if you were told to sort of you know listen to a piece of music say for example i don't know like um that's the first one on the night fly album by don baby that's an amazing album and you you know so right you've got to keep just an exercise keep still during this you can't you can't you just start swaying and it's like oh because it's deep, it's in your body. It's like Helen Reddy, um, not Helen Reddy, Helen, oh, Ian, we met, you used to sing um, with Boy George, Helen Terry. Helen, Helen Terry. Terry. <laughs> she called it big toe singing, didn't she? You sing from yeah. the big toe. Yeah. That's where it all comes up, you know. Yeah. And uh, and dancing is the same, it's an expression. Oh, blimey. Look at some singers, and I, do, I tend to do it if I've stood up. I, my hands go all over the shop, and and, I, I'm, and if I'm recording, people have videoed me doing recordings, and it's somewhat embarrassing for me. And you know, my arms are flying all over the place because the, the words are because I'm imagining that I'm not being looked at. So I'm I'm sort of the words your arms go is yeah, it, you can't help it. I think, James. Yeah, I, I really uh, relate to the thing with the arms because when I sing, I'm I'm often playing piano and. Uh, or guitar, and then I find out when I don't, and I just sing. The yeah. the arms kind of go crazy because you don't really know what to do with your hands. Absolutely. Your arms. Yeah, now, you just I, used to playing an instrument. That's right. It, it used. Mm. It was very difficult at first, and I, I I was slightly embarrassed about standing up. And one of the first people that I ever properly did it with was Ian Shaw, and he said, "Well, it's just I'll play for you, and you stand and sing." And it was "If I Loved You" from Carousel, and I just put my hands in my pockets, and that's where they stayed. I was shaking. But um, I got through it, and he was it did the most beautiful arrangement. But um, other times, you just can't, yeah, it's, it, the hand flies off, and that's nothing wrong with that. I don't think no, it just embrace it. <laughs> I wish I could hear you all sing and play. Nick, how are you with your hands? Do they fly all over the place when you listen to music? <laughs> They're off. <laughs> no. no. I think well, I'm a saxophone player, so I'm I'm lucky. I think I agree with James. I think if I didn't have a saxophone to hold. I'd be doing something else with them and, and they'd probably be all over the internet going, what's what's this strange person doing with their hands? Um, so I'd be yeah. doing all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah. We're bringing... We can help with this. We can totally help with this. Brilliant. We're bringing the evening to a close. Nick, what have you been... Have you enjoyed this session? It's been great, isn't it? It's been absolutely amazing. Probably the, the best send-off we could have hoped for of uh, oh. 2020 and of... of of Christmas, especially just before Christmas. I think it's it's the perfect way to spend it. You've been it's, been it's been an honor to be asked. Thank you very much indeed. True, it truly has, yeah. It's really interesting hearing your stories. Yeah, yeah. it's lovely. And we wish you all the very best, guys. And and I I mean I I'm I'm up for, I'm not pushing myself on it and or or anything, but I'd love to do a little something else sometime, so next year if, if anyone needs me or wants me. Louis, I can't I can't keep it in anymore. Is your dad Steve? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. So anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> Nick's Sorry. Been his socks Sorry. Give him my love. Give him my love. <laughs> Nick's been his socks off. Tell us about what you've been doing, Nick. Yes, so today is the 2021 uh, MYJC Summer School launch. So applications are now open. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> when, when is it for? I can tell people. In it's, um, we're, ha- we're going to be in the Repson School between the 22nd and the 28th of August. The audition tour is happening from the 27th of March all the way up to the end of April this year. Um, and you can go online and book your audition uh, right now. So spread the word, pass it on. Is yeah, can you send around. me some details, Nick? Sorry to interrupt. But yes, I will do, correct. absolutely. And anyone wanting to find out, just go onto the website, nationaljazz.co.uk forward slash summer dash school, then forward slash audition. And that's where you can find out about how to audition, what that involves, and also how to book your slot at one of the 13 audition venues around the country. So when we do the auditions, we actually do them for free. We don't charge anyone anything. We're really, really passionate about making sure that the music is accessible to all young musicians, all backgrounds, that no, there are no barriers. And so with that, it means each audition costs £50. So uh, if anyone's watching and would like to support our work, we, as you can imagine, with COVID, we've um, spent a lot of money on bursaries and supporting the young musicians coming online and doing things. So our bursary pot is a little bit empty. And uh, if there is anyone out there that would like to support <coughs> Nick, how do you do it? Fantastic. Yes, if you would like to support NYJC in its commitment to making our work accessible to all young musicians, no matter what their financial background please head to nationalyouthjazz.co.uk forward slash donate to make a donation. And we're going to have lots of things available next year. So in the new year, there'll be another newsletter in February that's got a whole programme for the whole year. So uh, not just the summer school. How do people sign up for the newsletter? The newsletter is nationalyouthjazz.co.uk forward slash sign up. Brilliant. So my darlings, it is time for us to say a very happy Christmas to everybody. And I'm so grateful to all of you for coming to join us. I'm subtly trying to light this lighter, and here we go. <laughs> I just have two little lighters to fill your knickers up with holly. Tra la 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 la. Pull them up, and you'll feel jolly. Tra la 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 la. So in a minute, I think we're going to sign off with the lovely video that you've, Leanne, you've made. But before we do that, I would, um, and maybe as we go into it, you could introduce it. But before we do that, I'd love to thank James, Louis, Phoebe for your fantastic questions. Big round yeah, of applause. Thank you. Very good. I'd like to thank. I think it's the same song that Ian did. Not as good, I'm afraid. And I'd really like to thank Nancy, Kat, and Annette for the fantastic video and a wonderful introduction to what we're going to be working on together next year. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you to Nick for all that you've been doing, Sweet Pie. You've got us online and you've got everything running so smoothly. So I'm very excited about next year's programme and definitely about bringing music and jazz together. But this, this evening, I think the special thanks go to our two wonderful guests who really get the festive spirit. Oh, please, can you join me thanking Ian Shaw? Thank you, Ian, my darling. Leanne Carroll, thank you so much. It's been so wonderful, really. All Great. Great fun, great fun. Lovely to meet you all. Good luck with everything. Absolutely. So would you sign us off, Leanne, and talk, tell us what it is that we're going to listen to, and then Nick's going to play the video. <laughs> I want to wish everybody a really happy Christmas, and it's been such a great year. It's been a difficult year. I am so proud of how we've all worked together, and I'm so proud of how wonderful everyone's been, the teachers, the young musicians, the management, the guests. It's been one big heart of love. So take that into 2021, everybody. We're here for each other. Have a really great Christmas. Over to you, Leanne. Well, at that, at that point, can I also uh, take an opportunity to thank Nick and thank you for being the people that you are and doing this incredible thing for the future of music. It's so vital and, oh, I'm a bit emotional. It's really brilliant. So thank you. And um, this is actually an exercise in realising that a song could be done in different ways, different um interpretations of the same song so the song that i did earlier for you is the same song that ian just did have yourself oh, really. sorry love <laughs> right. you did the best one <laughs> you can all write on secret papers who you prefer <laughs> so see you all soon everybody here you go bye, bye. bye everyone bye 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 Lucy. love you bye guys love you lots A merry little Christmas 
let your heart be light from now on our troubles will be out of sight yeah, yeah, yeah. so have yourself a merry little Christmas May the Yuletide gay From now on Our troubles will be far away And here we are As in old days Happy golden Yes, oh, faithful yes, friend who I wish you would be to us once more. Through the years, we all will be together. If the fates are 